<laughs> Welcome to our Aventura office for our company-wide training. We typically, as you guys, for the we have a lot of new faces in here today, uh, as we have a, a good group. Come on in, Brenda. We have a good group joining us from uh, Wiker Realtors in Sunny Isles. And um, so we typically do our company-wide trainings in our Edgewater office because we have a lot more space. But we do not have a recording studio there. And being that the recording studio is here, we wanted to try and see what it would be like to do our, our company-wide training in our in our Aventura office. I want to thank you all for being here because I am a huge believer that technology is going to play an important role in our business going forward. Okay. The thing is, how big of a role? And the realtors that fear technology and don't incorporate it into their business are going to be the ones that are going to be phased out. Okay. Mm. Now, if you are able to leverage technology and use it in combination with what I've always preached, which is the face-to-face, belly-to-belly, palm-to-palm, not only will you not be phased out, you'll be thriving for many, many, many years to come within our real estate business. Combinations. <laughs> so, and here is why. When you look at the traditional type of marketing in real estate today, you have mailers, you have door knocking, you have phone calls, you have banner ads on websites, you go to realtor.com, you have your photo, you have all that jazz. Come on in, Francisco. Okay? And that's great. But the reality is that our business has changed already and continues to change. And in our business, when there are 65,000 realtors in Dayton Broward County alone, right? There's how many belong just to the Miami Association? Uh, 45. 45, and then the other ones are with Fort Lauderdale. Customers have a choice with whom they want to work with. And if customers have a choice with whom they want to work with, don't you think they're going to choose somebody that they, that they like versus somebody that they don't? And when we talk about our business, and we talk about how we separate ourselves from the rest of the pack, with our sphere of influence, they know us, and they know who we are, they know our personality, they know our style, they know our energy, they know our vibe, they know when something's right, they know when something's wrong, they know all that. But how do you do that with the people that don't know who you are? How many of you get a, po a real estate postcard in the mail? Everybody, right? How many of you actually read it? Right. You do, because you're in the real estate business. I look at it and say, oh, this is an agent we got to recruit. That's what I like. But the traditional customer throws it in the trash, right? When they make a phone call, when you make a phone call, what happens typically? you got to try to convey your personality within two seconds before you get hung up on it. A banner ad, good luck if somebody clicks it, okay? And if you're on Realtor.com, then you happen to be the listing agent, by default they'll contact you because you're the listing agent. But what happens when you're not? So the only medium that we have today to allow us to do that in my opinion, I could be completely wrong, allows us to convey our personality, show our style, show our energy, show our knowledge, show who we are, is via video marketing. Okay? Now, I will be the first one to tell you that six months ago, not only did I not believe in video marketing, I thought the people that did it were douchebags. No lie. Okay? So one day, I was sitting at BCC, and I said, Craig, let's go. We're going to do an interview. Five minutes. It's called Inquiring Minds Want to Know. Richard Greenfield, come on in. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Richard Greenfield held the camera. He was going back and forth. And that is what launched what became Inquiring Minds Want to Know. Uh, for me, which eventually we changed the show, the name of the show to The Closer Club. We are now 42 episodes in. We recruited probably over 50 agents. Uh, yesterday, I had there's, how many of you are from Weikert? here today, a few of you, okay? We had the opportunity to present to 25 agents from Weicker because of the video that connected me with Eduardo, the, the, the broker of their company. Um, not to mention that I went from never speaking, I think I spoke at one event that Albert got me on a panel for Legends and Millennials in four and a half years to having spoken at three with three more coming up, which is great exposure because I spoke at an event on Friday at Aqualina on how to reach your goals in 2019 and as a result of that one presentation, we literally got 10 recruiting interviews out of it for Liz and for Carolina and for Alvin out of one presentation. Now, why does that matter to you guys? Because for me, my customer 
are brokers, right? My customers are you guys to bring to the company, and or other bro you know from other brokerages. You guys, your customers are buyers and sellers. So how can you speak to a seller at midnight? How do you speak to a buyer when it's six a.m. and they're sitting on their toilet? Okay, <laughs> think about it, guys. Video, video. Okay. The question is, or the main thing is, a lot of us are afraid to get in front of the camera. Okay, I still get nervous, and I'm forty, literally forty. Technically, I'm forty-two episodes in because I've already I have a pre-recorded one for a week that I'm going to be out of town in March. Okay, but on public, I'm forty-one episodes in. I still get nervous. But if you were to look at the progression from the very first video I did, which was Richard holding the camera and shaking his hand and going back and forth, to all of a sudden turning the camera sideways, to all of a sudden having a tripod, to having a mic, to having a light, to being able to Google Facebook Live and realize I can put my logo on the screen for Facebook Live, right? It was a process of doing it. So I'm gonna encourage you that no matter how scared you are, no matter how dumb you think you're going to look, because I know that's going through your head, okay? Or how insignificant or invaluable you think it is, I am telling you, do it. So much so that the owner of ISG, Craig, is finally gonna get in front and do the Miami, do Miami report videos for ISG. That's how powerful it is, okay? And the goal is, before it, I'm gonna introduce Kendrick in a minute, this is what I envision, okay? There's a building, there's a community, there's a neighborhood that you guys want to go after, okay? And imagine we have, and if you guys haven't seen the recording studio already, he's going to talk about it. We have a new style desk that goes up and down, it's powered with a 75 inch TV behind it. We have a green screen wall um, on, on the other side. And on the other side we have a, a dry erase board just like that blackboard there, okay? For those of you that like drawing out numbers, talking about, you know, investments, ROIs, and, and you want to draw it out, okay? Imagine being able to just get up and let's, let's pick Aventura Lakes and be able to talk about what happened in 2018 in Aventura Lakes within two minutes with a really nice presentation behind you on the TV. Okay? And they just talk about here's how many homes there are, here's how many are active, here's how many are sold, whatever. And then leveraging technology, you're, you're in the right place, come on in. Thank you. Then leveraging technology to be able to take your personality and your energy and your knowledge and your know how and your, and your sizzle and using technology to then put that in front of a customer at the right time, at the right place. And that's the power of video marketing, okay? So we made the investment to put the recording studio in there, and even then, we're still seeing where agents are like, wow, what do I do? So we brought in one of the best producers of videos in Miami that I know of, his name's Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> okay. okay, I know his name, I don't know the name of the company, which is totally okay. It's called HGAP Studios. HGAP Studios. To talk to you guys about how to put out quality material. Okay? The one thing I'm going to advise you to this, listen to everything he says. But do not wait to make everything perfect that he tells you to do. Because it will never be perfect. I filmed an interview with, um, who was it? I, uh, I forget, huh? No, it was J.P. Perez or the guy right there, Lewis Bergman. Episode like number 38 or 39, and you can still see the thing that holds my mic and my, my light, like in the top, like right-hand corner. It will never be perfect, and that's okay. But the purpose is to try to make it the best you can, and to actually, most importantly, do it. So, listen to Kendrick, get in front of the camera, Start doing your deal, and I promise you in six months, because you have to give it six months, right? just like farming. You're not going to knock on doors one time and expect magic results, okay? Six months, at least, well, maybe we'll talk about consistency. I do it once a week, okay? And then in six months, you're going to come to me and say, holy shit, you were right, okay? I can guarantee you that, and that's why I believe in it so much that no matter what everybody tells me, because, by the way, this is going to be a byproduct of what you're going to do. So be ready. People are going to tell you it's stupid, it doesn't work, you only care about yourself. The, you're going to get, like I like to say, you're going to get kicked in the nuts, part of my French, along the way. Okay? Keep the faith and do it. Because I am telling you, the people that are telling you that are because they can't get in front of a camera themselves and do it. And you will see a dramatic change in your business 
in the next six months. So with that said, Kendrick, it's your show. Awesome. Go for it. Good morning, you guys. Thank you so much for having me. Um, if you guys are standing back there and you want to pull up a chair over here, you're more than welcome to. That way you guys are not standing around. It's totally up to you. Um, my name is Kendrick Vasquez. I actually run and operate uh, HGAP Studios out of Windsor, Florida. We are primarily a media and marketing company. Right? So where other companies just create media and other companies just create uh, marketing efforts, we tie both those things into one, right? Because we feel like it's very important to create specific pieces of content to do whatever we need to do on the marketing front, right? When we push it. Um, I think Alex basically nailed it in the head, right? Like, we need to get started on social media marketing. You cannot be scared of this new technology that's coming back came out and will continue to evolve as the years come, right? There's a lot of you guys sitting here that already use social media marketing and are already shooting your own videos and you guys have already kind of seen a little bit of the results of what that can do, right? But imagine you step that up a little bit more, just another notch. Today we're gonna learn how to create content for social media, but at the end of the day, what we're really doing is marketing. Right? Because we have a saying in our company, if you don't market, you do not exist. And that's completely true. Okay? You can have the best product in the entire universe, but if no one knows that it exists, then it's just the best product that you know of. Right? So, who here is already using social media? Raise your hand. Awesome. Cool. So, there's two ways of creating content for social media. Right? And we're going to talk about that. One way is creating high quality content, right? And by high quality content, I mean using equipment such as this one that mm -hmm. produces really, really good images and really, really good things, okay? There's another way of creating content, and that's using this, which everybody has one in their hands, so you cannot, you cannot say that you can't do it, okay? Um, the cool thing about social media, and I'm only gonna be talking about two pieces, uh, two, two uh, platforms, and that's Instagram and Facebook. Okay. The other platforms are a little bit more complicated, um, but those are the only two that I feel like businesses can really flourish from, uh, Instagram and Facebook. With Instagram, um, they recently rolled out something called Stories, right? And then that's where the lower tier of quality content comes in. That's the content that you create right here on your phone. Okay. Um, Alex said something that was very on the nose, right? When you go ahead and create content on social media, right, and you're educating people, because that's really what you want to do, you want to educate people when you're creating content. Because people don't know, right? I want to go purchase a home, I want to go purchase a property, I want to go rent a property, but I don't know where to start, right? What you guys need to start doing is educating your audience on X, Y, and Z of owning or renting or buying or whatever property whatever it is that you guys want to sell, right? So that kind of media is very um, invasive, right? Like Alex says, you could literally be sitting on your toilet and you guys are educating me on how to purchase a property or, or what new property you guys have listed on the market and all that good stuff, okay? So it's, it's super cool. When you call people on the phone, they're kind of hesitant. When you send them an email, they might not reply. But when you're educating people and talking to people on social media, on your phone, as dumb as that may look out in the public, um, it's very invasive, right? Um, I'm there, I'm taking in the information that you're giving me, my guard is down, and if I have any other questions, then I'll go ahead and I'll reach out to you, right? Um, how many of you guys do stories already? Cool. How many of you guys are seeing that people are actually being responsive to the stories that you guys are posting out there? Right? That's exactly what we want. That's called a hot lead. Right? If you're educating somebody like, oh my god, check out this amazing property that has just went on the market, X, Y, and Z, and they're like, oh wow, that's super nice. Hot lead right there. Right? All you have to do is literally, without any fear, literally contact them through message. Okay? And then have them come in. Have them meet. Have them all, do all that good stuff. Okay? The cool thing is, related, ISG has gone ahead and created a little media lab so you guys can go ahead and start creating content on your own, okay? Because none of, uh, uh, maybe some of you do, but not everybody has the budgets to have a whole film crew around you 24 hours a day trying to capture content so then you can go and put it up online, okay? So now they're putting this in your hands so you guys can go ahead and do it freely. 
and without being scared, right? Because I know you step into that room and you're like, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? Don't be afraid. What Alex says is totally true also. Not all pieces of content are going to be amazing. It's not all going to look amazing. It's not all going to be professional, shot on cinema, uh, cameras, and all that stuff. It doesn't have to be. Okay? We are already conditioned that when we look at social media, we look at that story, we look at that feed, the quality doesn't have to be the best. Okay? There are little certain things that do have to be the best or the best that we can do. And that's what I want to educate you guys on today. Um, for those of you who are not using social media, okay, who are not creating content on a regular basis, you have to start. Okay? That's half the battle. If you're not pushing yourself, if you're not creating content, if you're not basically reaching out to people, then you're kind of falling behind, okay? And I, it's a fair warning because it's true. There's a million other real estate agents out there who are utilizing social media and their tools and are kicking butt, okay? And everybody here can go ahead and do the same thing. And also it's being efficient, right? When it comes to social media, you have Instagram, you have Facebook, you have Twitter, you have so many social media platforms, okay? How to be efficient with your social media. And that's like the beginning steps before creating anything, right? There's 30 days out of uh, a monthly cycle. So you need to provide information on all those 30 days, all right, okay, without going crazy. I know sometimes you're looking at your phone and you're like, what am I gonna post today? Right? And that's not good because you guys are already busy bodies. You guys are already busy bodies. So you have to be very strategic as how, on how to create this content. There's some chips in the Right? So what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to kind of get into a little bit of routine when it comes to creating content. Okay? I want you guys, and you guys could already start. Okay, when you go home today, start building yourself a content calendar. Okay? And what is a content calendar? A content calendar is basically next month, we're going into March. There's 30, 30 something days in, in March, right? 31, 31 days, thank you. <laughs> I, I see everything in 30s for some reason. Everything's just 30. Um, so what I want you guys to do today, okay, is I want you guys to go ahead and place a piece of content for every single day of next month beforehand, right? And these could be old images that you guys already have. These could be older pictures, uh, older videos that you guys may already have. If you guys don't have any content, start creating content, okay? Because you have to be consistent when it comes to posting every single day. Coca-Cola, Facebook, the huge companies <laughs> out there in the world, um, Amazon, every single day, they knock on your door. Right? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Every single day, these companies are knocking on your door, believe it or not, right? Because they're there. When you guys are scrolling on social media, boom, they're popping up. Every single day, believe it or not, and every single day, they're knocking on your door. Whether you open that door that day or not, it's totally up to you. But if you guys knock on the door every single day, I guarantee you, people will start opening those doors, okay? We're all leads, right? So, so we can make sales. So let's talk about high so, uh, content, high quality content, low quality content, right? So those 30 days out of the week, that's gonna go towards your feed, all right? So on Instagram and on Facebook, we have something called the feed, which is basically, this guy right here, right? Our feed, right? That's the thing, I mean, you pop into Instagram or Facebook, you see all the great images, you see all the great posts that we post every single day, what we ate, uh, who we saw last night, or whatever, whatever you guys want to be. Obviously, try to make it relatable to what your industry is, okay? If you guys only have one social media platform and it's a personal social media platform, and you're trying to reach people and sell something to people, then make sure you're providing the value of that specific social media platform. No worries, that happens. We're in the day and age, that, that happens. I'm sorry. No, you're okay, you're okay. No problem. Totally happens, right? <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna talk about stories, okay? So stories is another, believe it or not, platform inside of a platform. 
So this is basically where you're going to be educating people every single day on. This is where we're going to be using our phones to educate people. Okay? And again, what we cooked last night. Okay? A little chip that we ate last night. This is not mine. Not mine. <laughs> okay? But this is the, the, the easiest way to get to people. Okay? Let's say you guys are just went into a new property and you're ready to start putting that thing on the market. You're ready to start promoting that property. First thing I would recommend you guys to do is tell people how excited you are, right? That you just got this new listing. At the end of the day, we're all human beings and we like it when other people get excited about things, right? Because we want to be excited about those things as well. So it's like, I just got a new listing. Hi everybody, my name is Kendrick. I'm here in sunny Miami Beach and I want to introduce to you guys this beautiful new location that we just got on the market. First story, right? Then. Walk them around the space, right? These places are beautiful. A lot of you guys get to visit a lot of beautiful properties that people can't even fathom, right? Show it to them. That's the great way of, of them being like, oh my God, this is so nice. How much is that going for? Oh, hobby, okay? People will get in touch with you, with you and people will go ahead and start being responsive. You guys are gonna start to see how exciting it is. And it's basically gonna become a little bit of a um, like vice. Right? You guys want to start creating more content because you guys start to see how um, informative it is for other people and how other people are going to start reaching back to I'm not going to talk here for two hours. Okay. What I want to do also is I want to start grabbing uh, questions from everybody. Okay. So throughout the conversation, if you guys have a question, please feel free to, to raise your hand. And then we're also going to do a little Q&A so you guys can like, if you have a specific question, I would love to answer that question. Yes, Time for posting. Time for posting. You're amazing. Right? So we're talking about content creation, but time for posting is very important, right? You have your you have your content, you have your piece of content. Hi, good morning, coming in. No uh, this chair is right over there, right? Time for posting is very important, right? And the cool thing about social media is they have given you the tools to be able to know exactly at what time to post your social media content, okay? If you go on Instagram, if you go on Facebook, there's something there called analytics. And analytics will tell you exactly who your audience is, okay? And I'm talking about male, female, who your age group is. What do you see? I'll show you. So I'm here on my social media page, my personal page. When you click home, when you click here on that little bar, it's gonna give you insight, right? So everybody, take out your phones. Six. Yeah. Everybody, if you have Instagram, take out your phone. No. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's go where you where your little face comes out on the yeah. on the bottom right. Okay, so let's say you're on let's say you're home, right? Yeah. On the right hand side bottom, it's a, your little image, and then you're gonna see three little lines on the right hand top. Click on that, and it's gonna say insight. Okay, click on it. What do you guys see? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're pulling up our bed. What? It needs to be business. Okay, so if you have a business account, the insights are going to be a little bit great, right? They're going to give you more information. If you have a personal account, they're going to be a little bit. All right, but if you are using your social media for business, then I suggest you go ahead and create a business, right? Because we're gonna be efficient when it comes to posting those things. Okay, so if you have a business account, you can see your activity, you can see your content, and you can see your audience. Okay, here on audience, you'll be able to tell what your genders are. Right, right now I'm split 50/50, which is a good thing. I have the whole market. Um, Right now, the age group for myself is 25 to 34, okay? So you start to figure out what kind of content you want to start creating depending on what your demographic is. Who's really engaging with your content, okay? And what kind of content? 
So to answer your question, ma'am, all the way at the bottom, okay, you have days of the week. Down here it says Tuesday, and if you can read there, you can see that 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock is the most optimal time for us. On my personal page, right? Everybody's personal pages are going to be completely Okay, so again, you have to have a business account. So if you don't have one, create one. Okay, it's very easy. I'll take your your question. I'll take your question. Okay, so I'm not an expert on social media. So if you have questions, okay, that's fine. The name of the page. For example, Facebook, Instagram, should be the same name than my website? First question. Not necessary. Not necessary. Right? Because even though you are creating a brand, if that's if, if it's for example Pepsi, right? If, if it's a big and you want to create a big brand, then I would suggest that everything have the same name, right? So Pepsi on on the social media accounts, Pepsi on the website. Okay. If it's a personal account. You don't necessarily have to have the same name with the website. Those two things don't necessarily correlate with each other unless you're driving traffic to that website, which is that's the goal for social media, right? So to go from the from the from Instagram or Facebook to the website so they can learn more about your listings, more about your products. Okay, so the Instagram and Facebook, for example, should be the same name as well. If you don't have the same name and it's a personal account, but you're still using it for business, not necessarily, okay? But if you want to go ahead and brand something, if it's a company and you want to go ahead and brand that, then I would suggest it be the same name. Okay. Uh, sir, and then I'll take on your question. Okay. So, what would be the ideal or average length of a story or a message in Amazing. order to capture the person's attention, okay, and not get them bored? Awesome. Great, great question. Right? So, we live in a society that we get bored very quickly, okay? The cool thing is, uh, Instagram story only gives you about 15 seconds to deliver your message. Yeah, you can have a million 15 second clips, but you don't want to do that, right? You don't want to bombard people with, with too much information because otherwise they just become like, this is this is boring, this is annoying, right? So an, an ideal number to create stories daily would be around five or six. Okay. So, seconds. Seconds. Five or six stories, songs or whatever other brand. Chances are you're shooting in 1080p or maybe even in 4K, believe it or not. So you're covered. Basically, you're covered on the camera side of things. Okay. One thing that people will not, um, let's say, be forgiving is audio. Okay. Audio is the the least forgiving thing. You can have the shakiest video with the lowest quality video, and if the audio is good, people are still gonna engage with you. You can have the best video in the entire world, if the audio is not good, people are gonna follow you, okay? So when it comes to creating content on your own, make sure you're in a nice, quiet, controlled space, okay? There isn't like trucks passing by behind you and you're trying to give information to them, okay? Chances are you guys are gonna be in your homes, in your own proper, in your own homes or in other people's homes. Those are the great, greatest places to create content, you're inside, um, it's nice, whatever, okay? In the studio. In the studio, right? <laughs> so important, right? Create Creating content in the studio, so important. So make sure you audio is good. If you are one of those people who are gonna start to create more and more content, okay? Then I would recommend getting yourself a lavalier system for your phone. Okay? A what? A what? Okay. Lavalier. Okay, guys. Lava. 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 Lava.
So, this is a lavalier microphone, right? I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen it. Anybody in production has already seen it, okay? Lavalier, it's L-A-V-I, L-I, yeah. I think that's how you spell it. Lavalier, you can Google it. Okay? What is that? Lavalier. Okay, so basically you grab this guy, you connect it to yourself, okay? And then you connect this, I would be for more uh, professional video, but then you connect this side to your phone. Okay, so instead of capturing audio through the... Actually, it's pretty good. You know, compared to <coughs> over this um, microphone on your phone, you go ahead and are putting an extra system onto the phone where now you're capturing audio like a beast. Wow. Wait, um, okay. AirPods, AirPods. Which one do you recommend? Air AirPods. AirPods. Yeah. So if you guys already have AirPods, good. If you guys already have AirPods and are just going into your phone, go ahead and use that as well. Even if you don't have the AirPods, the, the little... The, the little um, headphones has a little microphone as well. Use them, okay? Yes. Is there any way with Bluetooth because AirPods works, or when you put the phone like far, it doesn't? Oh, really? I, I, I have a pretty good. It's, it's usually about 10 to 10 to 15 feet. I don't think you're gonna be want want to be further away from your phone anyway because you're not gonna get okay. a, a clear picture. Usually, when you're talking on Instagram, it's something that you want to be probably no more than eight feet away. Uh, so you're not gonna want to be a small, small thing, so you're, you're not going to have that problem usually. So, <laughs> so lavaliers, uh, if you go on on Amazon, you can actually purchase a cool little system for about $20. Or $12. $12, boom, killing it. Okay, for $12, and it's already going to boost the production. Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. <laughs> it's going to boost the production tenfold. Okay? So, lavalier system, that's what I would recommend. They also have other little external microphones, such as the one that this gentleman has on his, on his Osmo. What's up? Okay? What's you that can one connect called? that into your phones as well. Okay? Yes. What's the name of that one, that machine? Um, I want to say that's like a Road. The, the, the brand is called Rode, R O D E. And those you can okay. connect some to your. Do you recommend like any like I mean this is more advanced like drone inch video like the drones but it's pretty in, like extra. Drone videos are awesome. Yeah. You know whether you're whether it's a little kid on a bike or yeah, whatever it. they're always awesome. So if you have the capability of doing drone footage, absolutely. Right, because you're capturing people's right. attention. Um, okay, let's talk about lighting. Okay, we already hit audio. So audio is very simple. If your microphone does not work that well on your phone. Get yourself an external microphone. Okay? <laughs> Amazon, $12. Sure. She can send you the link. Add on it. Please. <laughs> Please. I'm, I'm sending it now. Awesome. <laughs> Let's talk about light. Okay? So, we have this great piece of content that we want to create, and we have everything set up, we have everything outlined, we go ahead and we set everything up, but we haven't taken into consideration light. We're in a really dark room. Is that going to work? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? You got the best piece of content. If it's not shot well, and if it doesn't have lighting, you're done. Right? So, luckily enough, here in the Media Lab, we have three pieces of lighting that I want to walk uh, you guys individually, uh, as groups, I'm sorry, so I can teach you guys how to use that stuff. Right? Because what we want you guys to do is come here on a regular basis with content that you want to create in your minds, and then go ahead and produce it in those videos. Okay? Now, we're not just creating content, guys. We're not just creating content, we're marketing, okay? This is just the catalyst of what we want to achieve, which is more sales, more eyeballs to our, our products and our brands, right? So don't think as content as just the end of you. Yeah, I created content, but now you gotta put that out there, okay? So we'll talk about the lighting that they have in there, but I'll talk to you guys how you can achieve amazing uh, videos with just the things that you have in your home, right? So let's say you're at home, it's mid-afternoon, you have a really nice light coming into whatever home you're in at the moment. Use that light, okay? Don't go to the dingiest corner where there's no light to create content, okay? 
go to where the, 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 the windows are. Stand next to the window. Let the window hit you. So let's say that's the window. I will be creating content right here, <laughs> this way. Okay? Don't stand against the light and create your content this way because otherwise you're just going to be a black silhouette. You know, some random weird things talking to you. So use what you have. If you have a well-lit place, use that well-lit place. Make, make your backgrounds look awesome, okay? Don't, don't just stand up against the wall, okay? Make your backgrounds look awesome. If you're, if you're in a beautiful building, in a beautiful uh, space, use that space, okay? Who has, who has any questions? Yes, sorry. Light bodies, let's say, if you, if you don't have... Uh, I know. I'm not so going to publish it. I'm not going to publish it. If you have good lighting, you have, you have either good lighting or you have bad lighting. Okay? And you'll be able to tell right on the spot. Okay? If you, if you point your, your phone towards yourself and you don't like what you see, then you have bad lighting. Okay? <laughs> Straight up. Photography film is all about light. Okay? If, if it's terribly lit, it's going to look terrible. And you're going to see it right away. You are your own biggest critic. Right? So, if you don't have that much light, then move to another area. Remove a light switch. Point a light switch. I guess my question also refers to can lighting be too bright? Yes. Yes. So, you ha there is issues of overexposure. Right? So, that's why I'm, I, I tell you, don't don't shoot towards the light. Because what's going to happen is you're going to be overexposed, you're just going to be a black silhouette. Even if you're shooting with the light, okay, there is a chance of overexposure where you look white, okay? And maybe you've been sweating a little bit that day, okay? So you stab or something, and then start shooting, okay? Move away from the light, you know? Find, find your angle, find your light. If, if you're shooting uh, your own listing, let's say, yes. okay. Uh, should you be in the picture like this, or should you show the... De depending on what you want to achieve, right? Um, let's say the first story is you introduce yourself again, and what, what they're about to see. Great. Then switch over to just the listing, okay? But don't do a walkthrough like this. Okay, guys, so here we have the kitchen area. Yeah. <laughs> and here we have... It has a countertop. No, we already know what you look like. We want to see what the house looks like. Okay, so, so should we get a stabilizer for that? I wouldn't worry too much about that. Stuff. No, like that, that's when your production is stepping up to another level, which I want it to get, right? I want you guys to be excited about creating really awesome content. Because the better the content and the better the marketing, the more sales you guys are going to have. Okay? okay. So, so, uh, uh, Instagram and people really like the, the human <laughs> side of Instagram. They don't want to feel like they're watching a, a always. A production is nice <laughs> once in a while, but they don't always want to feel like you're setting this up. The impromptuness of Instagram is important. So as long as you're not moving through the property, and here's the key thing: here's the thing that don't don't go crazy. Be as smooth as you can, and like he said, introduce yourself, and then flip the camera, do a, a nice steady walkthrough. As you're speaking, people understand what's going on, and they're gonna watch it because you're producing. It doesn't have to be perfect every time. It, it, it do, it, there is a lot to be said about the human nature behind Instagram, and you'll be surprised that some of the things that get the most likes are, you know, people, yeah, people authentic ones. Yeah, yeah, thank you. When I post pictures of my cat, I get the most, the most likes, of course. <laughs> yeah. But I'll meet Richard Branson, and it's like, that's not me. Who cares? Yeah. Okay. Um, who, has, who has questions? Yes. So when you're doing stories, yes. On both Instagram and Facebook, does the phone have to be like this? And let's see, when you're not doing a story and you're doing a regular video, can Instagram and Facebook That's a good take a video and done like this? So, Instagram, wants you, Instagram and Facebook wants you to use your phone like this. Okay, This is something that I'm personally, and this is a personal thing, because I'm a, I am a filmmaker, okay? I personally hate this. Right? You can't show landscape like this. Yeah. Right? Like I'm a filmmaker. I wanna I want like why am I just gonna use this little piece of screen when I can do this whole thing? You know what I mean? But they don't care. Right? And it's not what a lot of times not what we want. <laughs> it's what works best for them and, and, and everything else. So if you are using Instagram and Facebook, I would recommend recording like this. Okay, because Believe it or not, people are very lazy and will not go ahead and turn their phone. 
Okay, all they'll do is literally swipe right. That's it. Okay, so I would recommend shooting like this. Now, I like to do my own thing. So every once in a while, I'll go ahead and I'll flip it. But I will warn the audience before flipping. Believe it or not. So I'm gonna be like, hey guys, so I want to show you something really cool. Okay, what I want you to do is flip your phone really quick, and we'll go ahead and shoot. Okay, and then that way you already pump your audience. So <laughs> <laughs> You're the rotating. So she's, her question is, when we're on the story, we have to go ahead and record the story like this, because that's how everybody sees the story, right? But when you want to post something on your feed, you don't necessarily have to record it like this. You can record it like this. So when you upload it to your feed, it'll post like that. Okay. That's it. Then you you can do it with the iMovie or some sort of video editing. Mm -mm. So let's say you go ahead and record like this, and then you want to add that to your story and, and edit it to do this, you will crop uh, some things up. That's the part. IGTV so now as well. Exactly. Because when I upload it on iMovie and post on the text, it cuts it off. It cuts it off. So it's funny because people now, for IGTV high quality content, instead of shooting their content like this, they're shooting it like this. Right? So they're still doing high quality content, but now sideways to fit the format of the So instead of like this, now people are shooting like this. For IG. Or, or So if you shoot something like that, horizontally, and then you want to add it to your story, you will get crushed. So if you have two people, you're only going to see one. OK? Yes? Separate thing, like how you have that mic. Is there another tool for lighting? For lighting? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so there's a lot of different tools for lighting. Something that I would recommend, like if you guys are going to be creating content in here, and this is something that I, I am going to tell the team to, to invest in, but maybe something that you guys want to invest in too, okay? And it might be a little crazy. Wait, wait. No, no, Ring. So this is called a ring light, you guys. Okay? Ring lights are very popular in the beauty industry, okay? Because not only do you get amazing makeup done with this beautiful light, but you can create really awesome content just using this light. Now, this one's a little big, okay? You don't have to get one this big. Believe it or not, there are actually ring lights that will basically just pop into your phone where they're a little, a little bit bigger than, than your phone. <coughs> okay? And then there's also cases that have lighting already built in. Okay? So if you can and want to invest in something like that, awesome. You know, you put it on your phone, it's a little light, and you can create content. But if not, the sun is the most beautiful ring light in the entire time. Okay? Use what the sun is trying to give you, or a great piece of light. Okay? Use that as well. You don't have to go ahead and invest in all this stuff to get great light. If you want to step up your production, okay, because you're excited about it and, and you're learning and all this stuff, rock and roll. Okay? And this is something I am going to tell the team as well to please have it to uh, in the media. Hi, how many times can you shoot? Oh, great question. Okay, cool. So, um, Consistency is key, okay? Consistency with social media is key. That's how the algorithm starts to pop you up on your on on uh, people's feeds, okay? So I do recommend you post at least once a day. At least once a day, okay? Maximum, 
Never enough. <laughs> yes and no, because sometimes when it's like all this stuff, like you kind of get like, all right, dude, now. <laughs> you know, you got a new car. <laughs> yeah, so you don't want to be annoying, one, but you don't want to fall out. So you want to be consistent at least once a day, two times a day. I, I think three times a day is just a little too much sometimes, but that's totally up to you. And you're off. Because like sometimes, let's say, um, some people might feel like that, but they're not really up with them kids, but they call it like a bunch of other people. So they're like, oh, I didn't see your story, right? I didn't see your story. Yeah, but they don't see your story because they follow a bunch of other people. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't see your story Wonder. because Instagram is not showing up. <laughs> I want, to, I want to show you guys something. So, this is my rig. Okay? My rig. This is my entire rig. And all it is is, I gotta buy another light. It's a really bright light, right? It's got a, the mic that plugs into my iPhone, okay? My, uh, my iPhone itself, the, the, the tripod, and then this is called a, um, a Gobi or something like that. Okay, right. because it yeah, right. It's got like tentacle arms, and this is it. So that's great, but for me, I always carry it in my car. It's in, it's in literally in <coughs> my black duffel bag, and it's always in my car. And that's my entire rig. And I've traveled to New York twice and L.A. three times and all that jazz. So this is it. So that's great if you want to go around, but it doesn't have to be so complicated. Literally, I te you, know, you guys maybe saw me setting it up in the background. It literally takes two minutes to set up, and this is all you need, and you can get great video content like this. You this is great, this, this, this is better to get yourself. <laughs> so the tripod is from Best Buy. These three things, this was a package. The light, the mic, and this, this handle, okay? Uh, was on Amazon for like 60 bucks. Are you serious? Yeah, and this thing I bought at Best Buy with a tripod, this was like 20 bucks. What is that so, thing for? What what which thing? thing? So my entire rig. Maybe send an email with all those. Sure. The entire rig costs like a hundred dollars. So this is. I don't want to undo it because it's already. But it, essentially, it, like if I want to wrap it around here, I can wrap it around here. Oh, Gorilla Pod okay. by Gobi. Yeah. What is it? Gorilla Pod by Gobi. Gorilla Pod by Gobi. And then I just slide it on right there. And then the light has a slot on the top. Okay. That if I wanted to, like if I wanted to, essentially take this off and put it here. I've never done it, so I'm just gonna mess around. That's what code is. I can do it like that. And then put another light right in here. And that's all it is. Okay. Literally, this entire setup costs 100 bucks, and you can take it everywhere. Now, the reason I, pers me personally, I use my phone is he's got the, what is that? The, uh, the Osmo from DJI. I almost bought it. You can actually film Facebook Live videos with the DJI Osmo. It's like $200. Uh, drone nerd is right right out here. Okay? The only thing is with that with the Osmo the quality is amazing The only thing is you cannot put your logo on your screen So let's say that you want to get people to sp help sponsor your ads your videos Okay, so let's say that all of a sudden you're gonna film content regarding a mortgage broker Okay, or mortgages and you're gonna bring your mortgage broker on screen with you to talk about what interest rates are Why they should buy now or whatever, okay? Now that mortgage broker is getting promoted to your sphere of influence because you're going to put them on your social media outlets, and in return you're providing information to your to your social media, to your spheres, your your influence, whatever your circle and the, the people you're connected to. You can actually, and I'll send you guys the link on a Facebook Live video. You can actually add the logo to the screen. So if you watch my Facebook Live videos that I do, my logo is on the screen, okay, during the live video, and it's uh, it's called Facebook Frame. Uh, Facebook Frame Manager, I believe. And Rowena can send you the transparent, it's a transparent PNG logo, okay? Or you ask your mortgage broker for a transparent PNG logo, and then you create the frame. And all you have to do is all of a sudden, so let's say you get Columbus and, and Albert's with Columbus, and we're going to talk about interest rates. I can put Columbus Capital uh, logo right on the screen. Now, I don't choose to do that because because people ask me, oh, dude, I'll pay you to put the mortgage company or the title company on the street. I don't do that because that's not our, our point. Right? Our point is to promote the brokerage, okay? But that's how it came about. Mark from Title Guarantee is like, dude, why don't you put your logo on the screen? I'm like, oh, you can't do it with a Facebook Live video. And I'm like, ah, what do I know? Let me Google it. So I Googled it, and I'm like, oh my God, you can't. So you can actually then use that income to leverage into then promoting the video out. 
Okay? Just FYI. Are you putting this down with you? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, make whatever it is that you're using easy. Okay? If you don't, you don't want to be lugging around a bunch of equipment. That is a setup that literally costs nothing and you can take any. Okay, so make it simple, use the tools that you already have. Is it also yes. good to maybe get like a lens for the camera? You know you can get lenses nowadays for your yes. camera? That's, right. the whole, that's the whole setup. That's it. Now, if you want to start yeah. stepping up the production a little bit, yeah. get lenses. But if you don't, you know, what, kind of, what kind of lens? That, that camera